Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So on the 15th of November 2018, SHAL 2 P4A was launched from Cape Canaveral Launch Complex on a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. The SHAL 2 was jointly developed by Qatar Amateur Radio Society and the Qatar Satellite Company. Now the SHAL-2 resides at 26 degrees east longitude in a geostationary orbit and its prime function is to provide direct to home television services in the Middle East and North Africa regions. Now what's exciting about this satellite is that in addition to the commercial service the payload of SHAL-2 includes a linear transponder with a bandwidth of 250 kHz for narrowband and 8 MHz exclusively for the amateur radio satellite service. Now the uplink is on 2.4 gigs which is S band and the downlink is on 10.45 gigs which is in the X band. Now the narrow band transponder which has a bandwidth of 250 kHz can be used for modes such as SSB, CW, PSK while the wide band transponder which has the 8 MHz bandwidth can be used for digital amateur television. Yep that's right if you hold the appropriate license or in the satellite's predicted footprint and have the right gear you can broadcast live video to the S How To satellite for others to see. Now I have no previous experience in transmitting or listening to satellites apart from the ISS and other ham satellites as they pass overhead using nothing but a standard FM transceiver. Now because the SHAL 2s transponders are in the microwave frequency range, receiving a signal from the SHAL 2 would require some form of LMB and satellite receiving dish. Now the great thing is, like I said before, the SHAL-2 is geostationary, so there's no need to be tracking. Once you align your transmitter and receiving dishes, you can leave them there. Now if we concentrate on just the narrow band for the moment, it is possible to receive this just by connecting an SDR receiver to a dish with an appropriate LMB. Now the LMB will transvert the 10 gigs transmission down to an IF, which would need to be in the range that the SDR receiver is capable of. Now from the examples that I've seen online, most of these mix down to around 740, 750 megs, which is in the range of even the cheapest of SDR receivers. Now the only thing that would be required would be a bias T of around 12 volts to power the LMB and to set it into horizontal polarization. You would need around 18 volts for vertical polarization if you were going to be receiving the digital video from the 8 megs portion. Unfortunately, at the time of creating this video, I do not have the required high hardware to even build a receiver but don't worry I have the parts on order and I will show in a future video how to construct these parts and receive my first transmission from the S How To directly to my QTH here. Luckily I can demonstrate the reception of S How To and that's by means of a web SDR which has been set up by the British Amateur Television Club at an S How To ground station at Goonhilly Earth Station in Cornwall United Kingdom. Now this web SDR is available for anyone around the world who has an internet connection to go ahead, take a listen to the narrowband section and you can even tune around and change modes. I'll leave a link down in the description so you can try this for yourself but let's go ahead and have a little listen to what I received yesterday. Improving there, uh, John. So it's a nice sunny day here in northern England. We've had some good weather for a change just recently. And it makes it makes it nice. We had last Saturday is terrible and it's raining very heavily all day with a strong wind. They're completely different today, uh, uh, John. So back to you there. The L5 RDI, G R H N W you listening? Okay, Paul, yes. Well, you a little bit we come up with a Playing around in the beginning, I was overdriving my transverter. When then uh, I saw that the modulation of the FT290 R2 was not so good, then I took a uh, EA to FT817, but uh, the, the, the highs were missing. So then I returned to my good old uh, Kenwood TR751 Echo. 
So there we go, there's an example of listening to the SHOW2 narrowband section. Uh, you could hear the two guys there chatting, they're on sideband. Uh, you would have noticed that uh, when the second guy came in and started talking, that he was slightly off frequency. Now, the reason for this is because to transmit and to receive to the SHOW2 narrowband transponder, you're actually using two different systems. So you're using a system to transmit uh, the uplink of 2.4 gigs and then you're actually using another system to receive and listen to which is coming down on 10 gigs so it's not like having a, a transceiver where you can set the frequency to one specific frequency and you transmit and receive on the same system this you're using two different systems so there's going to be some kind of tolerance or difference between the two and also when it comes to sideband even a single hertz difference would make the audio sound slightly different either high pitched or low pitched or or completely unaudible so as you saw in the video there I was actually just altering the frequency slightly using the roll wheel on my mouse you can also use the other buttons to change frequency as well now like I said before I'll leave a link down in the description so go and have a look have a play with it see what you can listen to and pick up I've heard of quite a few European stations I've heard a lot of UK stations using this which is absolutely great but don't forget the actual footprint of this satellite is from Brazil all the way over to Asia so we so anywhere in between you saw in the previous pictures that I put up the actual coverage so anybody in that coverage area can actually access that satellite anyhow i hope you find this video interesting guys i think this is quite exciting because this is the first geostationary satellite that amateur radio users can have access to 24 7. until the next video guys take care and we'll see you in the next one